But there is a time for everything to be beautiful. There is always a time for everything to be beautiful. We found out nowadays that you find undergraduates of colleges, of universities who want to become multi-millionaire of dollars. Now, how do they want to become? They go to DBS, they go to spiritualists and they say that they want to make money. So we have Yahoo boys, we have Yahoo plus guys, they can do anything because of money. They forget that. What they are trying to get now, we always come. When the time comes, you will come with people. Let me tell you something. If you refuse to wait for the time of God before you get anything done, you're going to pay for it. It will never come with divine peace. That prosperity is not prosperity until there is the peace of God in that prosperity. What makes prosperity prosperity is not money. It's not the riches. It's the peace of God in it. You understand what I mean? Ecclesiastes 3, 11, it says, He had made everything, everything, everything beautiful in his time. If you check about the creation of the world, you discover that when God was creating the earth, he created everything per day. There was no rushing. This has to be done today. It cannot be tomorrow. What has to be tomorrow cannot be today. Everything has on time. You need to tell yourself, I still have time. I like you to say to yourself, I have time to prosper. I have time to make it. I have time to break through. And God is going to do it at the right time. He created the entire world in six days. He rested on the seventh day. He could have chosen as the Almighty God to create the whole world in two days. And nothing will have happened. But because God believes in the aspect of time, Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 22, the little one shall become a, a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. That you are not going to become big is a lie. That you are not going to become great is untrue. Forget about it. Only if you can wait for the time that he wants you to be established. There are a lot of people who just came out through early in their early days. I will say sometimes it can be very dangerous to be known so early. It's good. It can be fine. It can be known at 21 if God says that's your time. But there are a lot of people who get to, who become stars at 17, 18, 19. When they are 50, nobody's talking about them anymore. When they are 60, nobody sees them anymore. But there are people that start so early and then they break through and break through forever. Because probably they've had the chances of, actually, they've had the chances of paying their dues. So you can't afford to compare yourself with any friend on Facebook or anybody on Instagram or anybody on the social media when it's not yet your own time. That is the truth. You have some sisters who will say, my friends are married. They are in their husband's houses. Wow, really? Is that your own time? There are people who get married at 22. They still have to wait at 30 before they have their first child. And there are people who get married at 30 and then 30 years. And they give birth to children. And there are those who marry at 23 and they give birth to children immediately. So everybody has his own timing. You cannot afford to compare yourself with another person. The problem in our generation today is that a lot of people are living their lives on comparison. My cousin is like this. My brother is like this. So there's a lot of family pressure. There's a lot of societal pressure. There's a lot of social media pressure. You just go to the social media and then you see somebody and say, Oh, wow. So this person has done so much. This person is, 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 is using a brand new car. Meanwhile, that might not be his car. He could have actually posed with the car of his uncle. Let me tell you a story. One day. Some international film producers came outside, came from outside the country, from the U.S. They came to Nigeria, and I was to play a role in the movie. Uh, they called me to come and play a role. It's the role of a, a, a famous, a rich, young, a young rich man. And they gave me all the costumes. I was so handsome, man. You need to see. They gave me a, they brought a brand new car. I've never seen that car all my life. I believe one day God will give me that car. So I was in the car. It was, it had remote control and all that, had a driver, ah, wow, we're in Lagos, Lagos, Nigeria. You didn't get to see my suit, my shoes. I was told that my worth on that set was not less than one million Nigerian Naira. Calculate in dollars if you like. I mean, the suits, the shoes, the every, everything I was brand new. 
I saw it. The car, minus the car. The car I used in that movie, I was told was around 20 something million and all that. So, action! We got to the car, they drove the car, but on driving, the driver missed his way. So we had to go and turn. You know, Lagos now, once you miss your way, you are in trouble. We had to go and turn. Then while going, I saw an old friend and I said, Stop, let me greet this guy. I greeted the guy. The guy came to me. All the while, the guy didn't even know I was the one. They said, Oh, then he recognized me. Oh, Oriel oh, Fair Williams. It's been a while. All the while, he was just looking at me. I knew he was looking at the car and what I was wearing, things that didn't belong to me. You know, I oppressed him. He was not happy. His mood changed. You know, he had a mood swing. What's the past tense of swing? Swank, right? Yeah, his mood swank. <laughs> and I saw all over him that the guy was not happy. I didn't, I didn't tell him anything. I was look, just looking at him. I said, ah, wow. I collected my WhatsApp number. I had a driver. And he was looking at the car, looking at me, looking at how fresh I was. The makeup artist has done a good job. Man, the best of me came out. You understand? Then we spoke, we discussed, I entered the car, I left. Factory fitted, easy, brand new car. Ah, then I left. Then, I think the following day or that night or the following day, I had a message for him. How are you, Fred Williams? How are you? Please help me. If I when I saw you, it was like you were an angel. I said, ah, I don't be an angel, though. <laughs> I need you to help me, you see. Ah, I feel so bad. In fact, I feel like committing suicide right now. You have made it, you have blown. You are just blowing. See you. I said, well, why did you say that? He said, see the car. Look at what you are, you know. Look at your look at your appearance. Look at the car, the brand new car. He said a lot of things. I knew he was depressed. Then I came out and I told him, Mr. Man, all those things you saw are not mine. I was actually training, moving in that environment. The, that car was a prop. The, the clothes I was wearing on were costumes. I was just made up. Of course, I had I have my own car that I have my own car that, that's good, but that <laughs> my car is not as expensive as, as that. Maybe I'll buy that tomorrow. Amen. But it was gone. It was depressed. That was when it was relaxed. Oh, really? I said, yeah. When I left that place, I took my car and I left. I left their car. I returned all their costumes, including everything I wore. I returned to them. I wore my own. Don't cage my your life with mine. That's not me. I was acting and I was using some props. You understand? So, ah, he said, oh, sorry, oh, I thought, I said, you thought what? You thought I was, I was rich. So now I'm no longer rich because I've told you the truth. Praise God. And they laughed. And from then, we started talking. That is what happens to many people. They see other people using things. You don't even know the person. You don't, you don't know whose things they are using. The owner of those things they are using. And then you start feeling bad. You think God is not answering your prayers. Even if it is theirs, wait for your own time. Time. You don't give back to a baby and the baby will start talking like me. Now, if you give back to a baby today, hmm, and the baby just wakes, as soon as you give back to the baby, and the baby says, Mommy, how far? I said, everything, I'm hungry. What will you do? You run away, right? You can't stay in that hospital. And they say, Nurse, what's happening to you? I need an injection. I think I'm feeling some malaria. What do you do? You run away. That baby is not meant to talk like that immediately. You need to give that baby some time to talk, you know, to assimilate, to, 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 to get a clue to the environment. You understand what I mean? To start to crawl, then to walk, and then get strong bones, and then from there, go to the next stages of life. I think Jesus was thinking about this when he said, why then are you worrying yourself? Why then are you worrying every day when timing is important? He said in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 27, What, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit into his stature? Verse 28, And why taking thought of raiment, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Why worry? If you pray, you worship God, and then you pray, and uh, you fast, why then do you need to worry? You have to still wait for that time. Then somebody is saying, why do we have to pray if I need to wait for the time? So that that time will not miss you. Hmm? Some people miss their time. Do you know that? So you pray sometimes, you pray many times, so that you don't miss that time. The time God is bringing, 
that delicious meal to your table. Like you say in the book of Psalms, chapter 23, he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When that time comes, I don't want to miss my time. I don't want to miss my time. Some people start businesses today. They want their businesses to be like that of Bill Gates. Some people don't want to start small. You know, like I told one of my mentees, a female mentee, recently I said, look, the reason your business is not going to grow is that you don't believe in the small beginning. If you are doing this business, you have to start small. She is a soap manufacturer. You have to start making this soap in 10 bottles. From 10 bottles, it will grow to 50, to 100, to 1,000, then to 1 million. That's how to be a millionaire. Except you think God is a magician. That's how it works everywhere. Some people start ministry today. They want it to blow. They want, they can't start with two or three people. Even Jesus said, wherever two or three are gathered, I'm, 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 I'm there. Because he knows that at least you have somebody around you that can pray with you. Amen. Even if you don't have anybody around you, the Holy Spirit is there. And once the Holy Spirit is there, you are too. I'm there. Amen. Praise God. Now, you need to understand that to start small is essential. It's very, very important. To worry yourself over nothing does not make sense. You see the bird, like Jesus said, the birds fly up and down the heat and they are strong. The lilies, they become so beautiful. He says Solomon is not even as beautiful as those lilies. They are so beautiful. Who is making such things to be beautiful? Who is taking care of them? Who is, who, who is taking care of such, those lilies? They are beautiful because they never worry. They know when it's time to grow their own. And listen to me. You can't afford to compare a bungalow house with a 10-story building. If God is going to build your own career as a 10-story building, you've got to learn how to wait. That's what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah. He said, they that wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength. Because whoever believes in the value of time must learn how to wait. As in wait. As in wait. If you are building a bungalow, a three-bedroom flat, all you need to do at that time is just to lay a foundation and build. Everybody sees it, celebrates you. You do your housewarming, you enter the house. You are different from whoever is building a bungalow if what you are building is a 20-story building. I'm aware and I know that the, the, the highest building, I think in West Africa now or so, is in Ibadan. It's called Kukua. It's a very tall building. Very, very tall. The structure of the foundation alone can consume several, several bungalows to make it stand as it is. Praise God. So if you want to build something like that, when somebody who is packing into his bungalow house is celebrating, you are just laying your own foundation and nobody sees you. So while you are laying your foundation, you can't afford to feel bad about somebody who has packed into his own bungalow. That is the truth of the matter. You need to learn to wait for your time. Because when your time comes and they see that your own building is, is the tallest in the world, people will celebrate it. You know, people will look at you and see you as a genius, as a wonder. They begin to see you as what? A wonder. And then the person you built a bungalow years ago that you were trying to envy, will have said, wow. So all this why, this is what you have been building. I didn't know this is what you have been building. The same thing with crops. Don't you know that if you plant a maize, it will take maybe a few months to grow, to harvest, to start eating. But do you know that if you plant an orange, orange is different. So you have some crops, they call them annual crops. You have some, they call them biannual crops. And then you have some, they call them perennial crops. So each has its own timing. Each has its own timing. You can't compare the time of the perennial crop with the annual crop. You need to understand where God is taking you and what he's doing with your life now. Even if it looks as if nobody sees you, if it looks as if nobody is celebrating you right now, he's building a strong foundation for you that can accommodate 20-story building that people are going to see and celebrate. So whoever is doing his own now, leave them alone. That's their own time. Maybe their own destiny is to have a bungalow that will be celebrated, let them do it. There are, some others may just have a duplex. Let them do it. Face your own. There is no need to compare yourself with anyone. Let me give you another example. Listen to me. There are different fishes in the sea. Now, whatever it takes, it take, whatever time it takes a tilapia to become a tilapia is different from what it takes a, a, a shark to become a shark. What it takes a clarius to become a clarius is different from when it takes a whale to become a whale. So sometimes you are on a universal commission. You are different from somebody that has a local organization. That needs to be seen quickly. You understand? 
There are some people that, because theirs is universal, God is preparing their strength. He's preparing where they are going. He's, 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 he's equipping them. He's taking time on them. Taking time on their foundation. So, they know they are working. They actually know they are fasting and praying and they are planning and they are working. They are, they are singing. They are into music. They are into filmmaking. They are writing the books. And it's like, it's not showing. Oh, that guy, that is not even doing what I'm doing. That guy, look at that guy. Look at that guy. The guy is blowing. The guy already has his own bungalow and is already living there. Anybody knows he has a house. But he's still laying the foundation. God wants the foundation to be strong. Because if the foundation is not strong, what do you think the righteous will do later? That is why you find some houses when, when they grow tall on the wrong foundation, they collapse. So if you don't want yours to collapse, let God take time to build your foundation. Let him build your character. Some people want to lead people, but they don't have a large heart to lead. So God is building um, a, a large heart for them in their foundation. So after that, it now begins to build. It now begins to build, and they are seen all over the world. Listen to me. When it is about timing, why worry? I mean, why worry if it's about timing? Pray, fast, prepare, plan, but you don't need to worry because when you pray that you should not miss your time, you definitely will not miss your time. I will not miss my time in Jesus' name. Because I know God has uh, pleasant things like he said in the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He has pleasant stops, good stops. Lines are going to fall in pleasant places. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For the thoughts I have towards you are good thoughts to bring you to an expected end. That expected end is a phase of time. You are going to pass through that timing to be able to get there. That is the best way. Look, this is not motivation. This is the word tonic that you need right now that can help you grow in life. There is no point worrying when you know it's all about time. If God could create the world in six days, then what is your problem? You have a long time. I have a long time to achieve what you need to achieve. There is no point in solving ourselves. God could have created the entire world in one hour. So if he did it, who would have questioned him? Nobody. Nobody would have questioned him. So, there's no point worrying when we know it's about timing. I'll be right back with my usual guest, and we're still going to be talking about the same thing. Why worry? If it's about timing, Jesus blesses you. Amen. To watch all Orefe films online, go to YouTube, search for Orefe Williams Lafar TV, click on the subscribe button, then tap on the bell icon to get notifications of new videos. Also, to have a Refe Films mobile app on your phone, visit Google Play Store, then install. Then you have it like every other application on your phone. Click on the icon. It takes you to our website where you can watch all Refe Films for free. Refe Films, presenting meaningful films. Yeah, I'm back right now to watch Tonic and I'm at Life uh, Studios here. Uh, of course, of course, I'm... Um, Excited to be here, and I've been talking about timing, timing, timing. Why worry when it's about timing? I'm here again with my mentee, or one of my numerous mentees. He's a Bible teacher. Um, uh, he's a minstrel. He sings. I hope he has a song for us on this one today. And uh, why do you need to worry when it's about timing? I'm here with mentor Godwin Blitz. Thank you, Ahmed. Godwin Blitz. You're looking nice. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Was this how you were when you were born? <laughs> <laughs> there you go again, I <laughs> When you were born, was this how you were? Well, I'm not Kiriko. It was Kiriko that was born. <laughs> so it, it took time. It took time. To get here. Yes. To go to house. Was your voice bold when you were born? No. Okay, I'm coming. You have some beards. You, you, you're part of the beard gang. You're part of the beard gang, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. When you were a baby, when you were born at one year, did you have it? No, this was not there. Why? Ah, life. Now, if you see a baby at six months and you're already growing this thing, what would you do? But I would disappear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So that means timing is important. What can you say about timing? Well, Pat Mentor, you've taught us a lot about timing. And this is, you made numerous, you gave some numerous examples on timing. And you said um, there's a different. There are, there are different types of crops. You have the annual crops, you have the biannual crops, you have the perennial crops. 
Now, I watched uh, s some a clip sometimes back, and I used to, I was told about the the Chinese bamboo, which is the strongest bamboo in the world. Mm. Now, it takes while the day you plant the Chinese bamboo and you plant other crops, they would have grown far ahead, mm. and you will not see an offshoot. Yarawa, yarawa. And you don't see an offshoot of, of. the of the, 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 the Chinese bamboo. Oh, it takes yarawa. five years to grow on the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when others are growing and they are showing flowers and bringing out fruits, and everybody is celebrating, and everybody is celebrating, the Chinese bamboo is taking time to give itself roots. Mm. That's why. And you don't see anything on the you surface. You don't see anything on the surface. Nothing on the surface. surface. The farmer will, they, five years. Five years to grow on I mean, the ground. I mean, a farmer that has a maize farm will have harvested a lot of things. A lot. You'd have done three sessions of of, of, of maize farm in a year before you even time would have gone. But five years it takes roots. It spreads its roots abroad. Search for water. Get the right sources. Get the right um, uh, um, equipment that will make him grow without time and season. Now when it begins to come out. That five years is taken on the ground is for you to get new threads and it becomes strong. That's why it is the strongest in the world. So time is very essential. Hmm. The youth it now becomes the strongest in the, the world. Strongest in the strongest in all other trees that have been probably some of them will have faded. They would have faded out. The youth of nowadays need to know the place of time. Time is very important. We rush a lot in our generation. Hmm. In the generation, I want to make it fast. I want to be the. I want to make my millions. I want to get the best phone. I want to get the best car. Mercedes is the one raining now. This is the one raining. I want to just be where my. What it took our fathers time to build, what it took our fathers time to build. You want to get it, in in a, in a twinkle of time. It doesn't work that way. There is time. There is time for everything under the sun. That's what Ecclesiastes three, one says. There is time for everything. So you let everything happen in its own time. As you're doing your part, as you're playing your role, let everything work out in its own time. Hmm. Let everything work out in its, its own, own time. time. You said something the other time, that everything now is fast. Fast, 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 fast. Yes. So, fast. Fast food. Fast food. Fast this. Fast track. Fast track. Fast track. Everything fast, 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 fast. Fast, 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 fast. You should be done fast. Mm -hmm. When you get to a place and then you have to get some money on the ATM, machine and then it's not working on time or somebody is before you there was a time i wanted to withdraw some money at the atm machine and it wasn't my fault mm. the, the atm machine was releasing those funds little by little mm. you know do you know i got embarrassed mm. you know and I, the next person to me was impatient <laughs> i also came here to withdraw if i don't finish withdrawing I am not expected to leave. So many many times, I don't even like to go and withdraw the ATM. I prefer to send someone to help me withdraw. Mm. You know, you get to a place, you, you, you ask them to stand on the queue. Okay, you are supposed to queue up here and allow you. You want to cut corners. You want to cut corners because you want it fast. Mm -hmm. You want it fast. When you find some hold up in some popular cities, some cosmopolitan cities in our, in our country today, you discover that it's because somebody wanted to cut corners. Mm. Somebody, somebody somewhere didn't actually abide by, you know, the rule of time. Mm. If everybody was actually driving the way they should drive, probably there would be no hold up. Yes, sir. You understand? Right, sir. So you find a lot of people who do not appreciate that aspect of time. Mm. You just feel that, sir, it is, if it's 8 a.m. now, we can get everything to do now. Then I want to ask a question. Don't you think the church is contributing to it? Because sometimes we hear some messages in there because they are powerful messages. How, 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 when do you want your prosperity? We say now. We want it now. When do you want your your breakthrough? Now. You understand? Yes, sir. Is it wrong to say now is the time? Is it wrong for us to say, okay, now is that because I also want it now? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me ask you a question. When do you want your prosperity? I want it now. Next tomorrow? I want it now. Next year? I want it Two now. Two years now. I want it now. So you two are not waiting for time. Well, in the in the sense of it, when I say now, the now is, I'm saying it's ritual. It's so that God will recognize that his son mm. is waiting for his breakthrough. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean that I will not also wait for time because time is part of the now. Mm. Now is the time. Mm. Now is the appointed time. Mm. God works by time. God is time. Mm. He does. He is not restricted by time. Yeah. So he understands everything. He has the power to bring what is in the future down to here. 
He has the power to bring what happened in the past down here. So now that now should not be seen. That now should not be seen in the context of emergency. Yes. Yeah, but we just pray now that we want our financial breakthrough now. No. I expect that uh, as I'm going out now, somebody should just jump at me and give me 10 million. It doesn't work that way. Because now is also in the process of time. Yes, sir. We are saying now by faith. Yes, sir. Not because we lack patience, mm. but because we believe that now is in that timing. Yes, sir. And that now is not our own now. Mm -mm. That now is the now of God. Of God Almighty. And you know, the now of God is so funny because you mm. know what? One year can be like 1,000 years. Yes. 1,000 years can be like one year. Yes, sir. So the now of God is not the way we calculate our own mm -hmm. now. Because when we say one year to God, it can be 1,000. Yes, sir. When we say 1,000, it can be one year. So the now of God can be yesterday. Yes, sir. The now of God can be this minute. Mm -hmm. The now of God can be next year. Yes, so when we say, I want it now, we are still putting our faith in the word of God. Yes. And we are still expecting that. Um, that now. It's not ours. Yes. That now is submitted to the will of God. So yes, when sir. a pastor says, where do you want your miracle? And you say, now, you should have it in your mind that a pastor is not putting you on an emergency race running or rat running. He is also telling you to remember that the now I'm talking about is the now. The now. The time which is the now of God. Let me ask a question. Yes, sir. How does our society contribute to these things? You know, today's because you discover that people get worried a lot. How does how does this society contribute to it? Well, we the society has not really helped out in this matter. Because when you see people, you see people acquire wealth and get things in a way, and they want to use what they have to oppress others. Mm. You will feel embarrassed sometimes with the way people act. A man having 20, 50 cars, mm. a man fleet of, fleet of cars. And you, as a young man, you just let, you just graduated, you just finished serving, and um, you're waiting on the Lord for a very good job, or you're, you're trying to make ends meet with the gift or talent God has given unto you. And some people are really flamboyant lives. And you look at it that, okay, what, how many hair does this man has that I don't have? What is it man doing that I'm not doing? And you look at yourself, I think there's something he's doing that I'm not doing. Let me find out what others are doing to get what they get. So the society is not really help, 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 helping the situation. We should teach our people, we should live life not to oppress people. Because that is the, that is the main point where people change things. Ah, I was going on the street and a man was riding a very fine Mercedes Benz and he didn't even hold on, he didn't even go on. Not even a man, he'd be a small boy. A small boy, yeah, thank you, a, a mentor. A small boy of maybe 18 years and the, a man of 27, a guy of 27 and you are talking, ah. He splashes dirty water on you, and you all look at yourself and look at ah, this small boy. How is he doing it? Then you get if you're not if you're not conscious of God's timing and you're not aware and you don't have faith in God and you don't believe in what He has put inside of you, you will run beyond time. And that's what I was saying about this problem of the social media. Yes. Studio appearance on social media. You see people wear good clothes, stand beside cars. They are, shop, they are in shop right today. You don't know whether it's the weight with the friend. You don't know the car they are standing by, it belongs to somebody else. Because in shop right, you have car park where so many people park. And you see, nice, even if it is theirs. Of course, there are young people who make money because um, uh, they, they have good jobs. Sure. But you will have said, you, you, you can't tell me that somebody with 15, 16, 17 years, except he's, he's, he's quite fortunate to experience such an early breakthrough anyway, but it's from a rich family. There are so many people today who are into certain things that are not are uncalled for mm. just because they want to oppress. Yes. They just want to oppress. You know, and many times they find themselves in the pit of destruction. True, sir. You're the right. fact remains that when you cannot cooperate with time, mm. then you find yourself in trouble. The same thing for ministers of the gospel. There are people that when they start a ministry today, they think that now things should just start happening. They want to have the best of facilities, they want to have microphones, um, the best of microphones, the best of my, my speakers, the best of um, um, auditorium for their programs. They want to start receiving property seeds that are gigantic. They want to wear the most expensive suits. 
they want to they want to be like the bishops who have been there for 30 years mm, time and you are just doing yours mm -hmm. yes. and before you know it that's where heresy comes in yes that's where you don't speak the truth mm. you understand that's where you don't speak the truth how can we help the generation when it comes to mentorship and i think that's to the one of god right yes the one of god is the is the is principle for living it is the right base you should place your life in the word of god now we have people who mentor now it is not easy when you are alone sometimes in this generation you will get swayed by the things you see and by the things you hear mm. but when you put yourself under a very good mentor who tells you that this is not how it runs this is how it runs because i've been there before we are in this generation together you will move in that line because our, some of our hearts are shaky when we don't have somebody we are looking on to who, who we always call us to order that oh boy you're not doing it right this is how it goes you will you will shake so we need there's a place for mentorship then also from our homes we should learn to teach our children we should learn to show them the way because the bible says teach a child in the way he should go when he grows up he will not depart from it and that mentor if i will tell you this it is it it, it, it is it is one that bible is so 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 real because I've, I've experienced that it's so real teach a child the way to go it's a foundation inside mm -hmm. when the child is about to go off the way that inner call that inner call calls you back that foundation calls you back that boy are you sure you are going the right way so we need to teach from home then we need the place of mentorship then be focused concentrate on that sun the place of time that i will get there when God says I will get there. And I think it's because people do not understand the concept of time that they get worried. Mm -hmm. People get worried because they are not sure of, uh, they are not giving value to time. They, they, they feel that ah, this thing is too slow. Like you said, the, the, the strongest, um, uh, what is going to be the strongest tree in the whole world is comparing itself with another tree mm. that's going to fade out in six months. And if we take five years for that tree, to actually grow the roots in the soil, mm -hmm. five solid years. Five. So if in those five solid years is not patient, then that will maybe the end. Mm -hmm. And even after five solid years, you will start coming out little by little. Yes, sir. Then it will still take years for it to go to for it to grow. That is why you find some works they stay on forever. One hundred years, two centuries, three centuries. There are songs you still listen to. Song to see here, yes, sir. And yet, there were songs we had last year that nobody is singing about them again today. You're right, why? Because the difference, the different preparations towards those songs, you know, the, you can't compare, the difference is just incomparable. So, there is need for all of us to understand mm. the aspect of time. Let me tell you this apart from being a filmmaker, uh, I, I, I also have been in the academia mm. and I appreciate the academia. Once in a while, I still go to university to teach undergraduates. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about academic work. Uh, I'm talking about um, mentoring undergraduates, mentoring the youth on the invitation. I speak at conferences and all that. And I discover, just like everybody knows that, you can't become a professor in one year. No. You can't become a professor in two, three years. No matter how brilliant you are. You will start by being a graduate assistant. Maybe if you're not one, a graduate assistant, maybe you become an understand lecturer. Then you become a lecturer two. Then from there you become a lecturer one. Then you become a senior lecturer. Then you become what? An associate professor. Then from there you become a professor. So it takes time. Even if they have to honor you to become a professor, you will have achieved a lot of things. It will have taken years mm. of achievement mm. before somebody calls you, a university calls you to honor you to become a professor. Mm. So it takes time to get on there. It takes time. You don't become a university graduate the same year. You left. There is no course in this world that you you accept you are running the certificate in one conference. Mm. There is no degree that you can get in one day. It's not done. There is no diploma you can get in two days. Time. They will say it takes time. It takes time to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes time to do it. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was sent to this world. And then he didn't start his ministry until he was 30 years. Mm -hmm. It took time. Yes, sir. It took time for Jesus. You know? And then, what it took him time, it took him 30 years to prepare, he didn't do for more than three and a half years. Yes, sir. Are you seeing that? 
time. Some would have said, but I'm the son of God. At one year, they would have started using their eyes to cause special effects. <laughs> they say, why is he like that? He's the son of God. When they look at you like oh this, my God. and then they change the style of their eyes, you just see things change. Mm. Even you just turn to black. Mm. Even God will help you. say, ah, Jesus, I think you are too early. I think you're too early for you to <laughs> time for promotion. Some people are under mentors. Instead of them to be mentored properly, mm. you know, to stay under mentorship and grow. Mm. You know, they want to start their own. Mm. They want to start their ministry. They want to start their groups. I've had people like that. Mm. You know, mm. we mentor them to grow. We mentor them to do well. Before you know it, they want to start something. Then one of them, I think at the time, did the first film. <laughs> went down. Second film, when today is not, he's no longer a filmmaker. Mm. He has gone to other businesses. Because it doesn't happen that way. It, doesn't. it has to do with a lot of preparations. Yes, Some people are so gifted, so talented, they feel that that's all, that's all it is about ministry or about starting music. That's all they think. I think it's one of the person that said at the time. Yes. That he wanted to start. The pastor said no. no. He wanted to start. The pastor said no. Mm -hmm. Until the right time. Yes, sir. Can't you see where the university is today? Mm -hmm. At the time, Evangelist Topher and Abi told me, told me about her history, those days when they would give her no money, no dime. Today, to the glory of God, is traveling abroad, going all over the nations, you know. And when the ministers, I think they give her honorary dollars. Mm -hmm. those, who, those who never saw her then are now celebrating her. Mm. Because she waited for her time. I received the grace to wait for the time of the truth. I received, I received that grace. I think you're saying your own as you're watching. I received the grace. There's always that grace to wait for the time of breakthrough. Not to be in a hurry to go. When you're under a mentor, listen to that mentor. Listen to that pastor. Some people just want to do woo woo to the answer. Then it pays off. They, they, they always rotate around the clock and come back. I've seen people like that. And there are people that, that know the value of time. You know. There are some people, they were never told to lead an organization. They are supposed to break forth. Remember Bishop David Abiyue? Yes, sir. They are supposed to break from in that ministry, you know. <laughs> Somewhere like Bishop David Abiri, I just look at him or Winners Chapel, I just look at him sometimes and I say, there are some general overseers and founders who, who are not even as big as that man. Who don't control what he controls. Who, who don't have the kind of influence he has. But he's staying, serving a man of God. You know, serving in the commission of Bishop Abiri. Just because, I'm just, I'm, I'm just using him as an example. There are a lot of ministers like that who are big time ministers, but they know I don't have a calling to start mine. I'm actually called to service. Oh, anything can happen tomorrow, but I'm talking about what is happening today. I'm talking about what we are seeing right now and what we are seeing today. For somebody to be in a ministry for 30 years, 35 years, a person always understands the concept of timing, this concept of waiting, the concept of staying. We are some people pull out because God called them to. Others pull out God's God, we can go and go and never say so. Praise God. Do you have any other thing to say? Oh, the Ark Metro has said a lot, and we cannot exhaust this as I always say. The only thing I have to tell you, you out there, and everyone out there, is that wait for God's time. For God's time is just the best time. God's time is just the best time. God's time is just the best time. I will not uh, round up without telling you again what is it. Isaiah 60, 22. He said, a little one shall become a big one. A small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten him to his time. The hastening of that thing is never going to be by how I'm going to rush it, how you are going to rush it. Or how we worry about it. It's going to be in his time. There are some plans in your heart right now. You are thinking, how God will I do it? It's too slow. I think it should be done, be done now, be done now. I think I can. Can it be faster than what it used to be? Can I can God call hasten it? The hastening of that breakthrough is in his time. If you wait for the time of God, I can tell you, I can assure you as he has said, God is just the best. Let me tell you something. All this will make no meaning if you don't have Jesus Christ. 